put immediately the goal that I was announcing last time, right? Uh, today, our goal is to prove this theorem, original due to Watanabe and Yoshida, which generalizes celebrated Nagata's theorem to Hilbrook's multiplicity. We will show that a local ring is regular if and only if it is formally unmixed and Hilbrook's multiplicity is equal to one. So again, formally unmixed means that it's equidimensional and there are no embedded components for the completion. So one direction is not easy, but it's already done due to Kunz. We discussed it, that if it's a regular ring, then Hilbrook's function is identically one. And we will fight to get the other direction. So our strategy will be similar to what we did yesterday for F signature. We will do induction and we'll use uh, equimultiplicity, but things are going to be a bit more challenging because F signature lives in a strongly F regular ring, but uh, Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity not. So we'll need to uh, work a bit with tight closure, but I think it's quite appropriate for this conference to talk a bit more about tight closure and honor Mel and Craig in this way. But first, let me say what is the key tool. So the key tool for the theorem of Watanabe Yoshida is not surprisingly a lemma of Watanabe and Yoshida. So if Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of R is equal to one and I is in a primary ideal such that its Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity is greater or equal than its colant, then R is regular. And I need to put one more assumption, so we also need I to live inside M bracket P. Just simple. We need to, if we know that Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity is one and we can find a special in primary ideal, then that's enough to deduce that R is regular. So let me prove this lemma. For that, I will need two simple ingredients. The first of one is a slight uh, version of the result we discussed last time. So last time I proved this for J equals to R. Uh, by a filtration result, we took uh, just uh, the definition of co-length. Well, in this case, we'll take the length of J mod I. We'll take the composition series and we apply the Frobenius and then we count things and we'll get this inequality. Last time we did it for J equals to R, so there was no Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of J, but here we filter it uh, not all the way to R, but to J. The second result is also very simple. Uh, we say that the Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of a bracket power is going to be P to the D original Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity. So this is uh, an easy result coming just from changing index in the convergent sequence. So what do we have by definition? Here we'll get on top IQP, but in the denominator we have something slightly scaled. So we multiply both sides by P to the power D and we will get the original Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity. It's just the formal consequence for any convergent sequence. If we, with such normalization, if we change the index, it's going to pop out. Same way how it works for the usual multiplicity. So two simple lemmas to prove uh, the lemma of Watanabe and Yoshida. So let me give you the proof. Well, we need to use that this ideal I has all these wonderful properties. So I am going to use this lemma for I contained an M bracket P. I have Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of I, and it's going to be less or equal than Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of R times length of M bracket P over I plus Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of M bracket P. And I can compute many things here. So I know that Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of R by the assumption is one. Well, the length, I don't know, it still stays. 
what do I have here? By my lemma, I get this p to the d goes in front, then I get hilbert kunz multiplicity of m left, but that's by definition hilbert kunz multiplicity of r again equals to one. So the other part is p to the power d by combining with lemma. Good? All right. Now, what else we know? We know that this is going to be a greater or equal than the co-length. So length of r mod i. How can I write the length of r mod i? Well, I can still use it. I have a bigger ideal. So this is length of m bracket p modulo i plus co-length of m bracket p. So I just made an extra step in the computation of coland. So what do we see from this chain of inequalities? This is the same length as here, right? So the inequality between those two quantities will imply the inequality between p to the d and the coland. So I get that the length of r mod bracket m bracket p is less or equal than p to the power d. And now we look at this. We remember the Kuhn's theorem, the computations that we did before in the, on Tuesday, on the first day of classes. And we see that this immediately will imply uh, by the Kuhn's theorem that R is rectal. So. By Kuhn. We know that Actually, the inequality goes the other way around. And if its equality holds, then R is regular. This is the equivalent characterization of flatness that we discussed. So as you see, it's a very simple lemma, but somehow it has a strong punch. I don't know any good way to prove the watanabe yoshida theorem without going through the watanabe yoshida lemma. Somehow it is uh, really, really crucial for all the proofs that I know. Because uh, you could ask, uh, we have a very easy proof for, um, for a signature. We can get as easy proof uh, for hilbert kunz multiplicity if we assume that R is regular. Uh, R is strongly regular. But then, if you could prove from hilbert kunz multiplicity equals 1 that R is strongly regular, you could may as well just prove that it's coin Macaulay, and then, this is what Watanabe and Yoshida did in their original proof, once you know that the ring is coin Macaulay, you can just take i to be a parameter ideal deep enough, right? Because we know that for parameter ideals in coin Macaulay ring, we have the equality because Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity equals multiplicity for parameter ideals, and that's a characterization of coin Macaulay rings. Yeah. But proving that it's just coin Macaulay from this condition is not an easy task. Other ways to do it. Uh, well, we could use integral closed ideals, and uh, the other way to prove this, um, and basically some of the ideas that I will present, they come back to the paper of Craig Hunicke and Jan Wei Yao, who did induction, the same way how we do induction, and then they choose the special i to be symbolic power of a smaller prime ideal plus parameter element. So we will do something similar, but our construction of i will be based on induction and equimultiplicity. Okay, so let's proceed. So I want to start building equimultiplicity machinery. So last time we built, we understood when f signatures are equal, right? That was the equimultiplicity. Today we need to understand what happens when hilbert kunz multiplicity doesn't change when you localize. And to do so, I need a little bit more about tight closure. So tight closure. So I'll mention some of the things that uh, we already said. Let me remind you the definition that X is inside tight closure if and only if there exists C, which is not contained in any minimal prime, and C sends bracket powers of X into Frobenius powers of I for all Q large enough. So that's the definition of tight closure. I also need definition of test elements. So C is a test element. 
if it works for all x and all i over here in this definition, it does not exist C, it's this C will always work. So works for all x, all i. Right. So this is the element you can always use to test the test closure. That's why it's called test element. I will need the result of Hoekstra and Hunicke, which give us existence of the test elements if R is complete. Well, for me, it suffices complete and reduced, then test element exists. And uh, I want to remind you one more thing, which was already mentioned by Holger. Well, all those things more or less we've mentioned by Holger is that uh, if uh, under these assumptions of the Watanabe Yoshida theorem, so our head unmixed, we have the tight connection between tight closure and Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity. Then if I is contained in J and Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of I is equal to Hilbert Kuhn's of multiplicity of J, if and only if uh, J is contained in tight closure of I. So this is then. Okay, so I will need these four facts about tight closure. And I need also a couple of statements about tight closure. So first, I want a simple lemma. Uh, so if we have a test element, test element C, so I any ideal x is not contained in i, and I think, yes, that's all I need, x inside m, then the intersection of tight closures of i plus x n r star intersection of all n greater equals than one, greater equals than one, is going to be equal to the tight closure so I intersect that closure by adding deeper and deeper powers of x, and it's still going to intersect just to the tight closure of i. So I'll leave this as an exercise on the definition of test elements. It's very simple. You really need to use that C is uniform for all those tight closures, and then the assertion will just follow. The second lemma that I will need is about filtrations of ideals. So lemma, so under the same assumptions, we local, have a local ring which is unmixed. So now we are going to use the connection with Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity and suppose that, so we have local ring such that this completion is unmixed and then Le so I is uh, M primary. And LE is a sequence of M primary ideals such that I have three conditions, maybe A. So the sequence contains bracket powers of i, uh, the sequence behaves well with respect to bracket powers, and c, it converges to the hilbert kuhn's multiplicity of i. So limit as e equals to infinity, the length of r mod le over p to the power ed is equal to hilbert kuhn's multiplicity of i, then I want to say that uh, my ideal LE is contained in tight closure of bracket power for all E. So let me pause here for a second. So basically what I'm saying is that if we have 
Frobenius well-behaved sequence of ideals which still converge to hilbert kunz multiplicity of i, then all of them needs to be still within the tight closure, right? They cannot be too big. Is the assertion clear? Okay, so let's prove it. So the proof actually is very easy. Let's fix L, let's say, well, let's just fix LE, right? And what do we know for about LE? If I take E plus E prime, I'm going to have what? Inside of it, I'm going to, oh no, I want to say, so we want to compute hilbert kunz multiplicity of LE, so I need to take it to the bracket path, right? That's by definition how I compute hilbert kunz multiplicity. And now I want to sandwich it between things, and what I can use? I can use property A, and say that this is going to be containing P to the power E plus E prime, right? And on the other side, I can use property B, and say that it's going to be contained in L E plus E prime. Right. So I sandwich the bracket power of L E between those two things. And then I need to compute the limits. So if I take the colon of those guys and uh, divide by P to the power E prime D, right, so I divide it by P to the power E prime D because I want to compute hilbert kunz multiplicity of this ideal, right? So E prime is a variable. So what I'm going to get by the lemma over there, here I'll get hilbert kunz multiplicity of I P E, right? Which is equal to, well, P E something, uh, P E D uh, hilbert kunz multiplicity of I. So this is the lemma, right? So this is the definition of hilbert kunz multiplicity of P i to the power P, and this is the lemma. Then what do I have on this side? By my assumption, my sequence still converges to hilbert kunz multiplicity of i, and I'm changing the index, so it is the same proof as what I have here, right? I changed index in this sequence. I got that the limit is multiplied by p to the power d. I changed index in that sequence, and I will get that the limit is going to be multiplied by p to the power e d and times the original limit, which was by assumption hilbert kunz multiplicity of i, right? So what happens? It follows then hilbert kunz multiplicity of LE is equal to hilbert kunz multiplicity of I bracket PE. And therefore, I can use, uh, uh, well, one of these properties, the last one, right, to say that LE must be contained in the tight closure of P. Yeah, here I used property C. Does it make sense? Are there any questions? Okay, good. So, as long as my sequence is respecting Frobenius, I can deduce statements about tight closure, not just from hilbert kunz multiplicity of one ideal, but from the entire sequence. All right, so that was the tools from the tight closure theory that I will need in order to show, um, in order to derive the equimultiplicity machinery. So let me start raising things. And now we can talk a little bit about hilbert kunz equimultiplicity. So our goal is to understand better what does it mean for hilbert kunz multiplicity of localization to prime to be same as hilbert kunz multiplicity at the closed point, right, at the maximal ideal. 
And uh, the tool that we will use is the same tool that we used for the localization inequality. So let me remind you that we proved that if I take hilbert kunz multiplicity of P plus X and R, so if my, the, uh, so in this uh, setup, we had that the dimension of R mod P was just equal to one, right? And maybe let's call them Q. To avoid. So we proved last time, right, that this sequence, Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of my prime Q, and then I add uh, element not inside Q, any element, so X inside M minus Q. So it becomes a prime, uh, uh, M prime ideal, X plus Q. And then if I take limit of the sequence, it's going to be Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of X R mod Q times Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of R localized at Q. Or this is a parameter ideal, so I can write multiplicity. Maybe I prefer to write multiplicity. So we had this lemma, and that's the lemma that connects M primary things to something Q primary, right? That's the one that allows me to localize, if you like. So I want to build more understanding from this lemma. And if you remember, how did we then show uh, the localization inequality? I bounded this hilbert kunz multiplicities using the filtration lemma by hilbert kunz multiplicity of M times the colon, and it's also converged to multiplicity. So we want to build more understanding from this result. And I will do this by showing more about the sequence. So the sequence do not, does not just converge, it's actually a monotone sequence. So the lemma, crucial for me, is that under this assumption, so dimension of R mod Q is equal to one, X is inside maximal ideal, but outside of Q. Um, I can show that Hilbert Kuhn's, I will show to you that Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of X plus Xn plus Q uh, over N is going to be greater or equal than the same thing with Xn plus one. So it's a monotone sequence. Last time we just proved this convergence, but actually explain better, right, why does the sequence actually converge. And the important part for me, because I will try, I'm interested in equimultiplicity. Moreover, if equality holds over here, then we are going to get, uh, well, rather technical look and condition on limits. So limit as, uh, no, not limit, yeah, so limit as E approaches infinity, length of R mod, so let's see, so X P E R plus uh, P, no, not Q bracket, P E colon X N, so this is my ideal, I take bracket power or of P E, of X, right, and then I take colon of bracket power of Q. So this is a different thing. So I take colon, ah, and should be PE. And then if I divide it by P to the power ED, this is going to be the hilbert kunz multiplicity. So this is going to be equal to uh, hilbert kunz multiplicity, well, one over N hilbert kunz multiplicity of Q plus X. So we will see where this technical look and limit comes from. So the proof of the lemma is actually just by 
uh, following the proof of this statement from the last time, but uh, with paying attention to the details. So the key part from the last time was that if we had uh, a one-dimensional, then we had exact sequence of, uh, sorry, it was a, a mod xn, a, uh, no, n plus one, right? It surjects clearly on a mod xn a, and we can compute the kernel as a mod x plus annihilator of uh, xn. So we have this exact sequence. Well, what I can get from this exact sequence, I am going to plug, well, I'm going to plug into this uh, exact sequence Frobenius powers, right? My A is going to be what? It's going to be R bracket Q to the power PE, right? And my X will be appropriate powers of X, right? Uh, but maybe, let's see. Yeah, let's maybe write carefully so what do I get? What do, what do I want to remind you? So I want to remind you uh, that, um, so how did the proof go? So we have proven that land of A mod Xn, right? A is equal to the land, uh, so land A mod Xn minus one A plus this colon over there, so land of A mod x a, and here it's colon with x and minus one, right? So this was the first step of utilizing this exact sequence, and then we kept going, right? Now we can go from x and minus one to x and minus two, and so on. So we would get what? We'll get that this is equal to the sum of the length with different colon ideals, x a plus zero colon x k, Right, where k varies from zero to n minus one, right? It just utilizes the sequence over and over to decrease this power eventually just to power one. And uh, what else we observed in the just original proof? So I'm repeating the argument that we used over there. So we observed uh, that this is going to be greater or equal. So each of these colon ideals is going to be less or equal than what I have here, right? So this is um, length of A modulo XA plus zero colon XM. Because my colon ideals, they increase right with N. So I have the containment zero colon XI into zero colon XI plus one, right? The annihilators get bigger and bigger, so I get this inequality just because each of them individually is smaller exponent, right? Okay. Good. So now I can look and apply my observations to what I had over there, right? So. I can write to you that the length of, um, so I want to prove to you this inequality, right? So I need to get something with xn plus one and something with xn, and I could multiply n plus one to that side, right? So the length of A modulo xn plus one is equal to the length of A modulo xn A. And then I have uh, this colon piece, right? But uh, I can, oh, okay, let me write it. So actually not worth to write it. So now I'm going to use this inequality to remove uh, this colon ideal, right? So this is going to be less or equal than one over N, a length of uh, what I have there, right? 
length of uh, so what do I have so I x uh, so the length of a modulo x n is greater or equal than n times this length of the colon ideals. So I replace this guy right by one over n length of just a modulo x n a, right? So I have the same thing here and the same thing there. So they add up and they will give me this n plus one over n length of a modulo x n a. Make sense? So if this was statement star, then here I use statement star together with this bound over there. So this is where this inequality comes. Into this equality, I now replace, I give you a bound on this. Make sense? Take a look. Any questions? Okay, so now plug instead of A, R mod Q to the bracket power. And the statement just follows, right? So take A to be, uh, A to be what? A to be R modulo Q to the bracket power PE. Then what do I get from this inequality? I get that the length of R modulo my Q bracket power PE. And let's replace X to be x n to the power p e, what? So I get here x to the power n uh, plus one p e is less or equal than n plus one over n, right, length of r mod q p e plus x n p, right? So this is what I get by plugging a to b r modulo q bracket power. And then what do you see? You take the limit, right? And you precisely get the statement over here, right? I just left to take the limit to derive the first statement. And the second statement just comes from looking at this defect, right? If you look at this inequality and I have the equality between this and that, then I should have equality over here, right? Well, I'm taking limit, so I won't get exact equality, but I get equality in the limit, right? This colon term over there, so this one over here, the ones that I replaced should converge in the limit to this additional term that I have here, right? Because this is the inequality that I used. So if the limits are equal, this thing and this thing should have the same limit. Okay, does it make sense? So here, take limit and you're going to get Hilbert Kuntz. Q plus X N plus one, less or equal than N plus one, over N Hilbert cons of Q plus X. Okay, good. Any questions? All right, so that's a crucial lemma because um, what does it provide to us? It, it provides to us an interesting filtration inside my, um, I mean, it gives me something fitting into this limb, right? Because I get now some filtration which has the same limit as Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity, uh, which uh, has a limit equals to Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of some ideal. So from here, I can deduce something interesting. So what I can actually deduce? So let me raise the proof. Let me leave the lemma. right corner. So same assumption, so let me just say dimension of R mod Q is equal to one, X not inside Q. And suppose that Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of, uh, Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of R localized at Q is equal to Hilbert Kuhn's multiplicity of R. And then what I claim to you is that, um, well, let me just write that. Um, yeah, if I take Q to the power PE 
and I take tag closure of them, then this is going to be uh, emadically saturated, right? So this is going to be equals to itself. So the tight closure, in other ways, because R mod Q has dimension one, M is the only potential associated prime, you can restate it as the tight closures of Rabinius powers are Q primary, equivalent. So equivalently, these tight closures, yeah, maybe this is how I should reward, is Q primary. So let's prove this. Well, I want to use the lemma. I have this family of ideals. So let's look at what I get. So if I take LE to be Q bracket PE colon XNPE plus XPER, then over there I proved to you that uh, equimultiplicity is going to force, ah, maybe. Maybe add, uh, let me add to you, right, the actual proof, right, what we, uh, let me actually remind what we deduced last time, right. So here we wrote that this is less or equal than Hilbert-Kuhn's multiplicity of R times the same multiplicity. This was how we proved the localization inequality, right. We, we filtered this thing and we got upper bound and uh, this lemma that we had give us equality on the limit, right? And from here, we deduce that Hilbert-Kuhn's multiplicity of R is greater or equal than Hilbert-Kuhn's multiplicity of R localized at Q, right? So if I assume that these two things are equal, right, then I am going to get equality uh, over here, right? But then I have a descending sequence, right? So the equality must hold all the way through, right, from starting point K, uh, Q plus X and X, then going down and down, they all must be equal to this thing because I sandwiched it between two equal things, right? So I have a descending sequence which uh, starts and ends at the same point, right? This is what happens. Okay, does it make sense? So if Hilbert-Kuhn's multiplicity of R is equal to Hilbert-Kuhn's multiplicity of R localized at Q, this monotonicity forces that Hilbert-Kuhn's multiplicity of Q plus Xn, right, uh, R is going to be equal to N times Hilbert-Kuhn's multiplicity of R localized at Q times this thing, right, E of Xr. In other words, this sequence over here will become a constant sequence. And this is why I can get this uh, limit condition. Does it make sense? Okay, good. So then I look at this sequence of ideals. It is really easy to see using the properties of uh, colon ideals that the sequence satisfies the assumption of the lemma. So lemma, I don't know, I should give it name. So lemma A. So by this lemma A, I will get that LE star is going to be contained in what? In Q bracket PE plus X bracket PE, right? Uh, together, tight closure. Good. I look at the definition and I see that this part is on, already contained in the right hand side. So from here it follows that this saturation, this colon ideal X and PE is contained in this tight closure Q PE plus X PE R, right?
this holds for all n, right? Because nothing depends on n on the right-hand side. This is increasing chain, so eventually I'm going to get here the entire saturation. And x is a parameter, q has dimension one, so this is nothing else as, uh, nothing else as just q bracket pe uh, saturated with respect to the maximal ideal because modulo q, x is parameter, right, of m. It is m primary, right, modulo q. All right, and then um, what happens then is that I have this containment, right? So what I have is that Q bracket PE saturation is contained in Q bracket solid space, Q bracket PE plus XPE star. We have this state. But this statement now holds for all x. In particular, I could take one element x and take its powers, right? I could take x and pe here, right? n greater or equal than one, right? Because on the left-hand side, nothing depends on x. On the right-hand side, I was working with arbitrary x. So I can take x to be anything in particular powers, and then I can use the tight closure lemma to say that this is going to be contained in actually tight closure of Q P star. So the saturation is contained in the tight closure. Okay? Hmm. Okay, and then an easy exercise, so I won't explain it, it actually forces our tight closure to be saturated. You just write down, imagine that it's not saturated, that there is an element sent by power of maximal ideal into the tight closure, and you apply this condition that the tight closure still converges to the same limit as a regular powers, and you are going to get that this condition implies that the tight closures are already saturated. So this is a tight closure exercise. Um, good. Good. Right. So you see, I mean, using uh, all these properties of tight closure, we get at the end from this rather technical lemma over there a rather pretty condition, right? We just get that the tight closures of Rabinus powers, they're going to be Q primary, they're not going to have M primary components. Okay, so let me then erase this lemma and write one immediate consequence of this corollary. Corollary of a corollary. So if you know that an ideal is Q primary, so the quotient by it, because it's one dimension, is going to be coin Macaulay, so we have the consequence between length and multiplicity. So under these assumptions, assumptions are from here, what I'm going to get, that the multiplicity of x r mod q bracket p star is going to be equal to the length of r bracket q p star plus x so one dimensional coin mark. So just the condition of x being a regular element in this quotient. This is all it is. All right. So I can raise now everything and I can finish the proof. So the proof now of the Latinabi Shida theorem. I have now everything that I need. So we do induction on D. D equals to zero. We have Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity 
of R is the same as the length of R. So being equal to one implies that R is a field and field is regular, so we are done. So if D is bigger than zero, then I have a prime Q such that Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of RQ is equal to Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of R, right, proper prime. Right. Q contained but not equal to M, just by taking a chain of prime ideals. Right? So this is equimultiplicity condition and this being equals to one implies that Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of R, so because this is equal to one and this is always greater or equal than one, so from this chain of inequalities, right, the localization we proved last time, the equality must follow through, right? So we get that Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of RQ is equal to one, and in particular, it's equal to Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of R. And by induction, we assume that R localized at Q is regular. Good. All right. So, what do we need to do? We need to construct uh, the sequence satisfying uh, the Watanabe, uh, uh, an ideal satisfying the Watanabe Yoshida conditions. And I'm saying is that now let's just look at ideals that we can construct over there. So, I'll take Q bracket P star. I take X inside M bracket P, right, without Q. So I take this ideal. And I need to verify that it will satisfy the assumptions of the Watanabe Yoshida theorem. So uh, I, uh, it is easy to see that if my E is large enough, this is going to be all contained in the bracket power of MP, right? So this condition is okay, right? So this IE, well, IE is bad, let's call it LE. LE is contained in M bracket P for uh, E large. You can use that it's uh, going to be, I mean, you can just use that the Ries algebra of integral closures is uh, finitely generated and this is contained in integral closure. So I need just to choose uh, to compute length and multiplicity, right? So, so the Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of Q, Q bracket PE, right, uh, star plus XR, I want to compare it to actually to the length, right? But there, I mean, right, so I need to compute this length, right? So, but there I can just use uh, the multiplicity condition, right? And let me quickly speed it up. So uh, what we are going to see over there is that, um, so what do we see? So we see that if I take So basically what I see is that if I take, um, basically look at this thing, right? So let me take P bracket U, uh, E, right? So this is contained, this ideal over here, it is contained of course in tight closure of Q, uh, X, right? Together to the bracket P, E, right? star, so this Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity is going to be equal to the Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of that ideal, so it is Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of Q, X together, bracket P, E, so this is going to be, yeah, I should say P, E here. So this is just going to be equal to P, E to the power D, right, and then Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of Q, X, right, but then this is one of those things in the filtrations that I used, right? So I know that this is equal to P to the power D, Hilbert-Kunz multipli uh, multiplicity of X R mod Q times Hilbert-Kunz multiplicity of R cube, right? 
So I get this on one side. And then on the other side, I just use the consequence of this corollary, right? The length, so I could put P bracket E here. This is going to be E bracket here. So this is going to be PE. And then I use the associativity formula. This is multiplicity of X PE, R bracket Q. So PE are removed times uh, length of R Q, Q bracket PE, R. And because I assume that the localization is regular, this is just equal to P D minus one, right? So at the end, I get P D times the multiplicity. And over here, I assume that, he, I mean, it is consequence that Hilbert-Kuhn's multiplicity of RQ is equal to one. So I see that those two things are equal, right? And from this, I can apply the lemma of Watanabe and Yoshida, and it tells me that uh, my ring is regular. Okay, Oof. it's a place to stop. Thank you. Thank you, Craig.